You know, I've made more videos than anybody else on awesome cheap lenses, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with awesome cheap lenses. I'm all about buying a better deal or a better value. That's certainly not to say that there aren't some modern lenses that are absolutely incredible and just, you know, flat out it's not going to be matched. Um, there used to be a TV show on where this woman would like raid your closet and then she'd look at all the shit that you don't wear anymore. <laughs> she'd like say, you know, do you ever wear this? Like, no. Uh, I'm the one that should be like that, right? With hundreds of lenses or some lenses that I've got extra, extra, extra copies of. Anyway, she'd uh, tell the person, you know, realistically, what would you rather have, you know? Uh, 30 dumpy outfits or like five or six, really realistically seven, you know, one for every day of the week, you know, really nice outfits. And ultimately it make you happier and uh, make you look like a better dresser, even if you're wearing it more frequently than you are if you have a wider spectrum of, uh, you know, junk. And I'm not talking about any of the awesome lenses that are good value. I'm not saying that those are junk. My point is, is that whatever sort of branch of photography you're in, whether it's landscape or portraiture, it's like, well, what sort of cheap alternatives are there? It's like, I know you're on a budget, but you should be working towards the goal of two uh, layers of uh, your photographic lenses. The stuff that is, you know, 95% awesome enough. You know, like this lens, a prior version. This is really about 8% better or 10% better than the VR2. Yeah, it really is that much, which is significant. You're talking about the VR2, which was decent enough. However, I never recommended it to people. Never. Um, when you're talking about upper echelon stuff, the, the difference between expensive and, oh my god, super expensive, is uh, sometimes significant, but the actual improvement is usually maxing out between 5 to 10%. And that is where this falls. How this, However, this falls in the upper echelon of 8% to 10%. Uh, over the prior version. The point being the two layers of lenses that you should actually consider buying is obviously all the really really awesome stuff that is ultra ultra high value that I mentioned it could be old use stuff or like you know like the Voigt 58. It's like well you're buying that new yeah but I mean it's better made than a damn Zeiss and it you know it costs as much as a, a, a plastic a, a plastic squeeze toy Nikkor. You know this is from an Icon lens. You see this is a front element right there still in there. You see squeeze wee 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 you know, <laughs> that lens is, you know, like getting a Rolls Royce for the price of a used Volkswagen. Obviously, those lenses are good to get. They're actually better than good to get. But whatever narrow spectrum of photography that you're in, whether that's landscape photography or portrait photography, narrow in on, say, screw it on the price. And, of course, price is always an issue for most people. Obviously so. It is for me, too. I mean, my wallet's still screaming from this lens. But I've been waiting a decade for this lens. Yes. And it even beat my expectations. Like, I can't wait for this, the VR2 to be, uh, um, I said it would be replaced. I've been telling people for two years, the VR2 is being, oh, no, no, that lens is good. No, no, I said you're full of shit. The VR2 is going to be replaced. The lens sucks. I never recommend it for many valid reasons. Even Nikon knew that because Nikon made this lens for a damn reason. They just didn't wake up one morning and go, you know, fuck it. We're going to make a new lens to replace the VR2. They realized the same things that I was saying, that the VR2 had some serious deficiencies. They were not like major bummers. But for, you know, the top hardcore working lens for Nikon, it was not good enough. Canon was beating their ass on that lens. That lens was old. It, you know, this lens now blows everything else away in this range. It blows it the hell back away. The resolution is bleeding edge. Not cutting edge, but bleeding edge. Autofocus speed, rendition. Amazing. The point being is that whatever thing it is you're focused on, you consider like one or two, possibly three the most. Just say one or two. Depends on what it is you're shooting. Usually it's uh, two lenses. For some things, it's just like one lens. Like I'm going to focus in on the best of the best of the best, even if it is kind of obnoxiously expensive. It's like, what's the best? Like I only shoot portraiture photography. I've got like all these awesome cheap lenses. That's good. But instead of keep buying, you know, I got 500 bucks, I'm going to buy another awesome cheap lens. 500 bucks. No, how about saving that money? You surely should be saving it for lighting, for Christ's sakes. That's another discussion that I've had many, many. Lighting, lighting, lighting. Everything's lighting. That's another discussion. But you should be saving it, building up the money for some lens that, while slightly obnoxiously expensive, is worth every damn penny. Like, here's my perfect example. I've been waiting years and years and years for this lens. 
I didn't think it would be that good. You know, I thought, well, you know, it will be an improvement. But if it's not much of an improvement, I knew the resolution on autofocus would be improved. Like, I'm not going to buy it. But it was much more than that. Nikon really, uh, you know, man, they stuck their nose to the grindstone and they really ripped it off a good one this time. I mean, they did. And uh, you should consider whatever lens it is you do. I mean, if it's a perspective control, like I only do architectural photography. It's like, well, say for that expensive PC uh, shift lens. Say for that uh, Tamron 15. Well, I only do landscapes. Well, Good. Save for like that 20 millimeter 1.8G Nikkor, which is perfect for landscapes, by the way. Um, whatever perfect lens it is for the type of photography that you love the most. I mean, photography is a huge spectrum. You know, if you're a bird and wildlife shooter, instead of like saving up for, you know, a good enough telephoto lens, save up some money and get that awesome. Uh, telephoto lens. I mean, it, you'd be much happier in the long run. It's like, well, you know, I've got $600 now. I can either buy this lens, which is good enough. A lot of wildlife and bird shooters use this lens. But if I wait a few more months, I could buy the absolute pinnacle, not this lens, like the 200 to 500 Nikkor or 300, whatever it is. 200 to 500, I would actually say. Um, save up for that. That lens is pretty, you know. <laughs> I could buy two. I could buy two plus lenses for what uh, of those two hundred to five hundred nick were compared to what this one. You know, thirteen hundred times two is twenty six hundred dollars. This one's twenty eight hundred dollars. Ah! It's save up for that awesome lens for the specific type of photography you do because ultimately you ultimately you will be a happier person because uh, you won't be like, well, you know, this is good enough. You know, yeah, but you should have saved a little bit longer and bought the best of the best of the best. You know, keep buying all the cheap lenses, but whatever it is that makes you the most happy, photography, whether it's landscape, bird photography, architectural, landscape, whatever, try to get the best perfect lens for that arena of photography that makes you happiest. And that, you know, that really is a foolproof uh, philosophy as far as uh, lens acquisition to uh, fulfill your photographic needs. It's like, well, is it good? Stop getting your mind out of that, you know? For peripheral lenses for stuff that you enjoy doing, that's fine. Well, this is a really awesome lens. It's really cheap. Yeah, but what about the best? I think I drove that point home. Someone's going to go, You keep repeating yourself, goddammit. I hate it when you do that. Why do you keep repeating yourself? Someone's going to say that in this video. And then I'm going to laugh and go, Shut the hell up. No. <laughs> I know. I got that problem, right? Hey, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, I don't hurt anybody, all right? You know, we've all got our faults. You know, if you actually knew the amount of uh, things that I've been through in life, horrible things that are unmentionable, you know, we all come out of the, the war, shall we say, slightly damaged, you know? You come out the other end. You know, the, kind of like food doesn't come out the other end the same way it came in. You feel me? It's like, ooh, yeah, I just got that imagery in my head. That's awful. <laughs> human beings are the same way life digests you and then it poops you out the other end so yeah that's the way it works bye if you like this video you could always drop me um you know the one thing that i shouldn't be eating because i'm so fat and i need to get that myself is has anybody ever had red velvet uh cupcakes or like red velvet cake i don't even like sweets really Shortbread is not like sweet sweet. It's not like candy candy sweet. You know, shortbreads kind of count. It's like, yeah, they're sweets, but not really, really. They are technically. Shortbread. I mean, uh, ever had like red velvet cake? Ooh, God. Oh, ever had a red velvet cupcake? Oh, yeah. Bow, bow. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Ever had red velvet? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, with that white-looking icing on it. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to dream of a red velvet red velvet cake tonight. Ah, have a good one, bud. <laughs>